So uh, I am honored to uh, have Bill Payne here. So thank you, Bill. I'm going to turn it over to you, and we look forward to gathering some nuggets of wisdom. Thank you. So I, I put together a list of uh, deal makers and deal breakers. And I'm not going to spend any, a whole lot of time on any one of them, but if you've got questions, hopefully we'll have a little time at the end. <laughs> Before I did that, though, I sort of put down two things I like in term sheets. The, the first is I like boards with shared governance. That means that neither the entrepreneurs nor the investors have a majority on uh, the boards of directors, even of very early stage and seed stage companies. Uh, so the, that means that the the the, the vote that's important for the founders or the investors to get, if they need a majority, is an independent board member that is agreed upon uh, by both the investors uh, and the founders. So that's one thing. The second thing I like about term sheets is something that you heard me railing on yesterday, and I'd be happy to expand on that railing today if you're so interested. And that is, I like preferred shares offerings, even at the er very earliest stage, and I dis intensely dislike uh, convertible debt. Now, I know that's sacrosanct uh, in some uh, regions, uh, but uh, I prefer not to invest in convertible debt. So, let's talk about deal makers. An experienced, coachable, uh, entrepreneur and team with integrity, that's important to me. A rational term sheet with an appropriate valuation, that's uh, definitely a deal maker for me. A company with scalable revenue opportunity, with credentialed customers or at least some significant market validation, and a product with an unfair competitive advantage. So I tried to limit my list to five. There, it probably could have been 15, but let's go with those five. Um, deal breakers. The first one is an arrogant entrepreneur. And by I, I equate arrogance with uncoachable. Uh, they already know everything, so why would they need a, a team on the uh, as a member of the board of directors. Why would angels engage with them? And remember that we are active investors, serving on boards and serving as coaches and advisors to our entrepreneurs. So dealing with an uncoachable CEO is a problem. I am also very skeptical of husband and wife teams. Um, why? Well, actually. And equal, and equal partner teams for the same reason. It is unclear to me that husband and wife teams or equal partner teams um, have the same uh, commitment to the business. And yet, and when they come to us, they usually have a 50-50 ownership. Uh, and we have to, if one of, if a, a divorce happens, or if one of them wants out, then we have to deal with basically half the stock in the company and uh, trying to figure out uh, how we can reacquire uh, those shares for the company. Um, a third deal killer to some degree for me is uh, when I see a, the, a balance sheet that has a lot of accrued liabilities, such as the entrepreneur that thinks that when he worked at Microsoft he made $160,000 a year and he can't afford to pay himself that as a startup entrepreneur so he's accruing the rest and the company can pay him back that later. Um, uh, also uh, loans from the family that will be paid back of course out of the angel capital that comes into the company and not loan. You know, we're building companies for growth, not to pay back big credit card debt or uh, loans that were made to the company, which really should have been in the form of an equity. Um, 
I'm very skeptical of part products with no val market validation. Every entrepreneur I've met is convinced that the world will be the path to their door for their product. Well, I like to talk to some of those people who are going to buy that product. In fact, I'd like for them to have actually demonstrated that somebody does want to buy that product. And finally, this is a favorite pet peeve of mine, an unreasonable timing on closing. In other words, I get a, I've invested in this company last year, and I get a phone call on Wednesday, having not heard from the company since I made that investment, and the entrepreneur says, you know, you're going to lose all your money. Um, it's Wednesday, and we haven't got enough cash in the bank to pay, make my payroll on Friday. You know what my response to that is? Bye bye. Because I'm uh, very risk adverse. I, I'm I uh, am used to dealing with risk, and I know I can't raise that amount of money. Uh, that they're going to need between Wednesday and Friday to make by payroll. So their mistake for not keeping me informed uh, as to what their issues were as they came along. So that's my list of five uh, deal makers and five deal breakers. And if you've got any questions around those, I'd be happy to address them.